Fight Live returns to Channel 5 this Friday. Two of Britain's most exciting super lightweights collide at London's legendary York Hall. Don't miss Eubank vs Farrell this Friday on Channel 5. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. Let's see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from me and this has been like a therapy session. This is Kung Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's Fight Week. I'm joined by... 258 Sandy Ryan. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you had to bring that up, didn't you? Oh, no, no, sorry. What did I mean? I mean SDN. Oh, unbelievable SDN. They're like the best. Oh, my God. Sorry. I don't know what I was doing now. Sorry. What made me say that today? Well, look fantastic. Ready for a great fight against Anahi, Anahi Sanchez. Shout out to Sandy Ryan. Uh, of course, Clifton and also 258 done a great job to get her back in the game and on the verge now of a world title shot. STN. Who did I say? 258. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Paul Rudy. S STN, sorry, mate. STN. Are you okay, Paul? The outstanding, the outstanding STN management. Paul Rudy, what a, what a great guy. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, no. Okay. Right, anyway. As we Mad, isn't it? How are you, Sandy? You all right? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep that in, but we are with SDN's Sandy Ryan. What the fuck was Hearn doing? I think he did it on purpose, if you ask me, but what do I know? <laughs> no comment, but it was funny, wasn't it? It was funny. It's all right. The fact that we're talking about it now means that you're winning, Paul. There we go. <laughs> but you corrected him, so it was all good. I know. Well, if I didn't correct him, <laughs> it wouldn't look good, would it? Quite an eventful, uh, well, your press conference was a little bit boring, really, wasn't it? Your one, as in it was split into two, compared to mm. Dillian White's one with uh, Jermaine Franklin. Did you watch that one? Yeah, I watched it, yeah. 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 I don't know what was going on, but Dimitri Salita was pushing Dillian White, and Dillian White was jumping off stages, and yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like the opponent wasn't doing anything. It's just his trainer and his manager was like mm. trying to get a piece of uh, Dillian, but... I don't think that's a good move, is it? <laughs> anyway, that's not your concern. Uh, your concern is, first of all, let's talk about your change of opponent uh, for this weekend. There's a few people who actually have the opinion that this is a tougher test than Rodriguez. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but the, the, we... Matt Hume tried to get over her opponents and she was the only one willing to step up, so... Um, we said yes yeah, straight away. Um, yeah, I just was one phone call with Cliff and my manager, and then that was it. Done deal. Uh, for people that don't know, obviously, uh, Sanchez has been in with and, and gone the distance with the likes of McCaskill, Cameron Taylor, etc. etc. So, uh, yeah, she I think she's only been stopped once in her career, so she's uh, there's I think five losses on her record, two very elite. Uh, rivals, but yeah, I suppose her record speaks for itself. Yeah, and if you go and watch them fights back um, against McCaskill, Katie Taylor, she was in wars with them, like it was a war um, for the whole fight. So um, th this is not a walkover fight. This is not a light, um, a light test. This is this is <laughs> a world title fight. She's world level. And that's what I'm fighting at early on in my career, my sixth fight. So um, people can't say anything to that. You can't. But I've just got to go in on Saturday and perform. And, um, and then I'll, I'll just let that speak for itself. In certain aspects, do you feel like you're almost starting your career again um. from your last fight? Yeah, from my last fight, I said that. And... Um, you ju um, you just see the way I come in, um, physically. I'm still developing physically. Like I've still got a lot of uh, physical strength in my body. Like I know. So give us a give me and Cliff another year, and you see a um, a one forty machine. But I'm I'm good. I'm good to go now. Um, but I'm just saying like I'm still physically developing and. Uh, I'm mentally there now, so 
we just keep uh, working away. You've not had that many fights, as you as you pointed out in your uh, professional short professional career, but even after those fights that you've had, do you now look at the losses, possibly a learning curve that can be turned into a positive? Yeah, like I say at the time when Cliff said it was, it, he was glad it happened then, and I was like, no, but now. It's, um, I am glad and uh, I'm a completely different fighter. Um, I've learned a lot from it. And so, yes, I know what, what we can uh, achieve in this sport now. What's been the main difference when you say you're a completely different fighter? What's been the main aspects that has kind of resulted into that? Um, it's not more, it's not as as much boxing because I've always been able to fight. Um, I've been fighting all my life. Um, I'd fight more times than what I am at the minute if I could. Um, it's more uh, I've learned about life, about how to deal with life situations, how to deal with um, my mind. Um, I've just grew massively in that aspect. Did that night that wasn't your night, did that was that the changing factor or was stuff already implemented into talking like you are now about what you've learnt more so outside of the ring, I suppose, from what you're saying than inside the ring? No, it changed after the loss. Um, there's a lot changed. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's just a lot changed after that loss because I was fully broken and... Um, yeah, so my life literally switched around and uh, yeah, Cliff Cliff got me in touch with a speak to a guy and um, it's just, yeah, and and not a lot, of, not many people know that and half of my family don't know that. Um, but my family is uh, my team um, and the people I have around me now uh, because um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. So that that's what I class them as my family. And so each win that I take, my team are taking. And um, I want to carry that with me throughout my career. I think it was pointed out initially when you took that fight that you were taking a risk quite early on in your career. But that was that. But then in certain aspects, the bigger risk was going back in again straight after which you decided to do um, straight away. So it paid off for you. But like I said, there, there was a risk element in the, in the initial fight. But yeah, I think, the big, I think the bigger risk was actually going straight back in. It was because there was so much pressure on the line. Um, like so much pressure. And people just actually don't understand that. Like literally my career was on the line. And people were like, no, you're still early on in career, but no. It was on the line. Um, and so to switch it all around and do everything how me and my team did it, um, it was just, it was nice. And like you see, start of my uh, career. I was there, obviously, the, well, both nights, but the, the second night you see how emotional you got after the fight and, yeah, and... You kind of let it know to everyone exactly what that uh, night and win meant for you and obviously the people around you as well. Yeah, um, so like I never really celebrated wins or anything because growing up uh, doing being on GB and you're always boxing regular so you never really have the chance to celebrate any win really. So I would just carry that into my pro career and then when you do take a, a loss and then you take a big hit and there's so much on the line and pro boxing is business, so you're getting paid, this is a job. Um, um, getting the win, it was just, it was, that's why it was so emotional. And um, yeah, so that's why also I'm more grateful for that win as well because and I never really was grateful of a lot of things in life, whereas now I'm grateful for a lot of things. 
I'm assuming, obviously, you've got a, a job in hand this this Saturday here at Wembley, but I'm assuming after this, there's got to be some sort of path that's being mapped out to a world title. We know with the women, it can be as soon as have a few fights or kind of as many fights as you've you've had. So um, I'm assuming that there will be a plan in place from your team um, to kind of get you on the path now to challenging for a world title. Yeah, there's obviously talks and and uh, Eddie's made it quite clear as well uh, that this uh, world honours after. And so, yeah, next year is going to be a big year. OK, well, look, we've uh, had the press conference, obviously, weighing in tomorrow, so uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Have you got anything else you'd like to add before we finish, Sandy? Um. No. <laughs> I'm all good. Did you look over there for approval? I don't know. Yeah. Always. Always. Cliff scene. Up the Rams. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, Sandy Ryan, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, and uh, we'll grab a word of you after your fight. So, the best of luck on Saturday night, live on the zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you. Fight Live returns to Channel 5 this Friday. Two of Britain's most exciting super lightweights collide at London's legendary York Hall. Don't miss Eubank versus Farrell this Friday on Channel 5. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light. Yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.